you might have a situation where you're catching them on top order bait. And say you got a limit of three pounders since you're catching on a popper and you want to upgrade. Well, a great way to upgrade is to go to the buzz bait. You know they're hitting top water. And for some reason, the buzz bait's almost like what a jig is, the bottom baits. I don't know whether it's the extra agitation or the different things you can do speed-wise with it. Boy, big bass just love to kill that right there. So for me, if I'm needing a big bite or if I'm targeting just strictly big fish on top, the buzz bait's probably gonna be the player. And plus, it's one of the greatest top water baits in the world for covering a lot of water. And it'll come over and through grass real good, different cover scenarios. And it's a bait that your hookup ratio is real good a high percentage of the time. And it really is the fall where I think it's at its best. I think all topwater baits are just dynamite in the fall or post-spawn. A lot of times just get a visual of where you need to be fishing in the fall by the surface activity. And you'll see shad actually uh, pop in the water. You'll see water birds. You see any of that gives you a tip off. The bait's there, the bass are there. Shad is the key deal for fall fishing. No matter whether you're catching them on a square bill, you're catching them flipping, or you're catching them you know, on top water or spinner bait, you need to be where the bait's at. And that, all that bait has been out on pretty much the main river all summer, and in the fall they migrate back into these creeks and that. And you pull into a creek that's got bait, it's probably gonna have fish feeding on that bait. And, You'll be in the right place when you get in that scenario. The perception in general is that top water lures are at their best on cloudy days. And to a certain extent, that's a little bit true. Uh, if you'll notice, you'll have a good top water bite early in the morning and late in the evening during your low light conditions. But an example right now, like down at Amstead, my best top water bites in the middle of the day when it's calm out, slick, the hotter the better on a frog, they're getting up underneath the mats and they're very, very aggressive. Well, topwaters can be the same way. They can hit all day long on them. And there's been many, many tournaments won in the afternoon on a topwater bite rather than in the morning. So don't, don't think that it's just that small window in the morning where you're gonna get the opportunity. It can be open all day. And some of the bigger fish that I've ever caught on topwater have been in the middle of the day rather than early in the day. Always having your rod in the right position. Very, very important. You don't want to be pointing at the bait. If you're pointing at the bait, he's really got nowhere to go when he hits the bait. He's got you tight lined immediately. And once in a while, you're probably going to take the bait away from him. If you got too high of a rod, you're not going to get a good hook set. So anytime you're moving a bait, you want to have an angle about like that. Now that fish hits it, you can just load on him. You're in position to set the hook. Right now, I'm fishing this buzz bait on 40 pound cigar smack down braid, and just a great braid. 40's as light as I like to go. I know some guys will go 30 and that and even fish their walking baits on braid and that's fine. But just get you a, a setup. Get you the right system that works for you to where you can present the bait good and you're getting a high percentage of your explosions hooked up and into the boat. That's the name of the game. Uh, doesn't do any good if you're missing a bunch of fish. Then your setup's probably wrong or you're fishing it wrong. And another thing, 100% of the time, throw the trailer hook. Don't think you don't need it. They're eating it good. Oh, I don't need a trailer hook. You do need a trailer hook because there's always gonna be that one fish that's gonna hit it a little bit short. Or why not get him hooked up with a couple of hooks? So I fish that trailer hook 100% of the time. That little deal right there can make you a lot of money. I like the two blade. There are three bladed buzz baits on the market. The two blade to me just has a little bit better sound. I can do more things with it. You want a bait to squeak a little more, you can mess with the ribbon on the back here, bend it around where it's just hitting part of that. Uh, obviously, the more worn out a bait is, the more you've used it, the more play there's gonna be, the louder the squeakier it's gonna be. So you can do things there. You can bend it down to where the blade is hitting the wire shaft or the head on some baits and get a clicker out of it. There's times they like that noise a little bit more aggressive. I always like the planing head on the bait. It helps keep it up a little easier at slow speeds. And of course, I've got a good Mustad trailer hook on the back with a keeper to where if he short strikes it, he's probably gonna get that. A lot of times, even if he gets the main hook, this hook will pin him underneath the jaw. That right there, that is a big fish weapon. You give me a buzz bait, you give me a spinner bait, those two baits in the fall period of the year, I'll be a happy camper.